I'm Shi Tian from the National University of Singapore, and today I'm going to talk about our work on Service Mark, extracting service contributions from call for papers by myself, Abhinav, and Min. I've broken up this presentation into four different parts. Firstly, I'll talk about the main motivations behind why we seek to extract service contributions from call for papers. This is followed by a brief recap of some past work that has already been done specifically in the retrieval of these kinds of information. I'll then move on to talk about this new system that we've designed to tackle the task, and lastly, how we evaluated it. The main motivation we have in extracting service contributions is because of how important it is to have volunteers in organizing and reviewing research work in the computer science community. On the one hand, conferences like this one would be impossible without the organizing committee. And on the other, service contributions become key for middle and senior scholars to demonstrate their leadership within the community. Yet more often than not, when it comes to assessing someone's research contributions, service tends to be something that's often overlooked and we instead focus on bibliometrics that are solely concerned with citation counts, an example being the H-index. Hence, what we seek to achieve is to be able to document service contributions in computer science. This is where we leverage conference call for paper websites. As most of us know, call for paper websites seek to solicit research work for different research venues. And more importantly, they acknowledge the committee members' efforts by listing names, affiliations, and roles, which is what we seek to extract. So some past work on information extraction from call for papers have been mainly focused on call for paper emails, which unfortunately do not contain service information in its entirety, and hence does not serve as a viable avenue for extracting service contributions at a more granular level. There have also been attempts to create a unified knowledge base documenting service contributions, namely Open Research, Publons, and Gatekeeper. Now both Open Research and Publons have shortcomings in terms of coverage due mainly to the fact that they rely heavily on crowdsourced in input. Compared to our approach of an automated large-scale retrieval, they are enabled to provide as representative an overview of the research landscape. Gatekeeper is an automated system very similar to ours, but it still does not compare in terms of scale. So before I move on to system design, we first give a formulation of our task, which is to extract unique scholar, affiliation, and conference role label tuples from computer science call for paper websites. Now given our task, we built a system starting with an automated crawler originating from wikicfp.com, which is a website that contains cross-sourced information on upcoming conferences. Our crawler then extracts relevant web pages containing the information we need from each individual call for paper website based on the rule-based URL classifier. Considering conference websites are updated each year and URLs may be used, reused, or might have become inaccessible, we also make use of the Wayback Machine Archive to access archived versions of these pages. So once we have retrieved the raw HTML of relevant pages from our crawler, we can then pre-process it so as to perform line classification for each line of text on the page. The, the reason why we're doing this, uh, which is classification at the level of individual lines of text, is because we observe that most of the information we seek to extract from these conference websites are atomic in the sense that they exist in a structured list. So in the example above, we can see that we have an overarching row label followed by textual lines that contain information on researcher and his or her affiliation. Our final labels for the line classification task is hence either one of row label, scholar, and affiliation, when a line contains text only of such atomic information, or complex, which means the line contains any combination of the previous three labels. And of course, lastly, irrelevant if the line does not contain any information that we need. And with our BIOSTM, we are able to achieve a F1 score of 97% for 12,000 hand-labeled lines. Now with the relevant lines at our disposal, we perform name entity recognition to retrieve individual entities. This is especially important for lines which are assigned a complex label and contain multiple entities. We utilize the open source Flat NLP engine directly for this task. But we also realize that since Flat NLP is trained on semantically rich text with adequate punctuation, which is not always present in our case, it performs poorly when it comes to multiple entities with no separating punctuation. To tackle this, we enhance the extraction process by training our own character level bidirectional LSTM CRF for entities extracted by Flat NLP that are longer than a certain number of tokens. And these are the performance gains that we observe when we use our model on top of Flat NLP. Now moving on, to attribute affiliations and role labels to the extracted scholars, we leverage on the fact that most conference websites have consistent structure, such as a role label immediately followed by scholars and their affiliation. 
In turn, we are able to utilize a simple rule-based system to attribute each scholar with his or her affiliation and service role. Now, one of the problems that naturally arises in retrieving a database of researcher names is that of name disambiguation, where we seek to resolve situations where two different name entities point to the same person or when two similar names point to different people. As an initial step, we first try to disambiguate names by clustering affiliations. Using a TF-IDF representation of each affiliation, we merge potentially similar affiliations using hierarchical agglomerative clustering. We then leverage on existing scholarly knowledge base, DBLP, directly for further scholar name disambiguation. We utilize the DBLP API to resolve cases where inconsistent naming conventions exist, such as the one above. And that concludes our system design. Now, of course, we want our knowledge base to be publicly available, and we've developed the front-end extension to our database, which we'll demo now. So this is the website that we came up with uh, as an extension to our system. And we actually ranked individual scholars based on their service contributions and thereafter their affiliations and conferences in general. So of course you can search for individual scholars and I'll display some basic information as well as a detailed list of service contributions that we've extracted. To evaluate the performance of our system, we first conduct a manual examination of the precision and recall of our system through random sampling. Our results show extractions of scholar affiliation role label tuples at a 92% precision level. We were also able to extract meaningful results from about three quarters of accessible conferences on Wikicfp. These results amount to approximately 130,000 unique scholars extracted. Now, atop our evaluation of precision and recall, we also seek to verify whether our extractions at a high level is able to paint a representative picture of the computer science landscape. We compare top institutions in our system to those based on established bibliometrics such as QS rankings. We focus on SMPR in Table 1, which is a ranking we derive by running an adaptation of page rank algorithm on our knowledge graph. From the number of overlapping institutions based on SMPR and established metrics, we can conclude that our system is able to capture the top institutions in CS research. And it's a promising sign that our extractions are able to present a representative landscape of service contributions. And with that, we've come to the end of my presentation on service mark. It is still an ongoing project and further improvements can definitely be made down the line. For now, I hope this has been an informative session and thank you very much for your time.